Hi, I'm Chuck Hawley from West Marine. Today I'm joined by John Morin, and the topic is shore power systems, what they do for boaters, how to ensure compatibility with different electrical sources as you cruise, and how to avoid some common problems. This video is part of the West Advisor Do-It-Yourself Project Series, where we give you information on how to do common boat projects and how to select important boat products correctly. John, let's start with an obvious question. What's a shore power system, and why are they useful to boaters? Virtually all boats will have DC electrical system on board so that owners can start their engine or engines, operate interior lights, pump their bilges, and operate marine electronics. The boat's DC system either operates on 12 volt or possibly 24 volt from energy stored in the boat's batteries and replenished by the boat's charging system. A shore power system is different in that it allows you to bring AC electricity on board from a source on the dock. You literally plug your boat into the local utility and enjoy all of the advantages on board that you'd enjoy in your home or business. So a shore power system replaces having a generator or inverter on board? One way to think about it is that while they may share some of the same wiring in the vessel, a shore power system is an external source of electrical power and an inverter or generator is internal. Thanks, John. So a shore power system allows you to run all sorts of useful appliances and tools on board when you're in a marina. One of the most common items is a battery charger to keep your batteries topped off when you're not on board. Other items include dehumidifiers, heaters, kitchen appliances, power tools, and entertainment products like TVs and stereos. John, let's start at the source and work our way to the vessel. So this is a common shore power pedestal. In this case, this is providing 30 amp service to two different slips, so it has two 30 amp outlets. A connector here, or an outlet here, 30 amp breakers here, which in this case are both in the off position, and this other little breaker is just for the night light so that you can walk on the docks. So we take one of the shore power connectors, and it's got a polarized plug, it only fits in one way. We can put it in place and twist it. Now you don't need a ceiling ring in this case because when you close down the lid, this becomes a waterproof or at least a water shedding enclosure. So you don't actually use the ceiling ring on the shore power outlet. It's vital that you use plugs and receptacles that are intended to be used together, or you could create big problems. Never use a cord that has the prong removed or altered, and never force a plug to fit. The plug should fit easily and stay in place after twisting. So this is a situation you find all the time. Somebody's kind of made up their own cord. Sometimes this is because the cords become damaged and they've replaced just the end, in this case the plug, or maybe they've uh, bought bulk length of 10-3 uh, cable, 10 gauge, 3 conductor cable, and they put together their own one. But this, what, this really isn't a marine fitting, and what you'll notice is that the terminals are corroded and they're actually slightly bent. Now they're, they're designed to carry 30 amps of current, but it's not designed for the marine environment. So you get high resistance here, and the other thing is you don't have any waterproofness, so water can run down the back side of the cord set, go inside the plug, and then you, that gives you problems over time. Larger boats consume more power, and there are two ways of supplying this power. Some boats use two 30 amp cord sets, which plug into two 30 amp inlets. Sometimes one inlet is used specifically by air conditioning, while the other supplies other circuits on the boat. So if a single 30 amp cord isn't enough to satisfy the amount of current that you want to draw on board, you can put two 30 amp cords together. In this case, this is a Catalina 42, and what they've done is they've actually, this isn't a second 30 amp connector. Here's the normal shore power connector, again with the ceiling ring on it. This case, this is designed for cable TV and telephone, so it's actually a completely different purpose. But it could have been designed for um, just a second shore power inlet. And incidentally, this uses Marinco's very fast opening arrangement. You turn it about an eighth of a turn and it locks very quickly. It also is compatible with the ring. So you, if you have somebody else's cord that has a spin-on ring or if you have an older Marinco cord, you can screw it on. But you can see that this only requires about an eighth of a turn to lock it or unlock it. Alternatively, your boat may be equipped with a 50 amp, 125 volt, or a 50 amp, 125 250 volt cord set and inlet, assuming that your marina provides 50 amp service. The advantage of using a 50 amp 125 250 volt cord set is that you can run 250 volt products like stoves and large air conditioners. 
We frequently get questions about the difference between 50 amp 125 volt and 50 amp 125 250 volt cord sets and inlets. And no wonder, it can be confusing. They're completely different animals and you cannot interchange one for the other. The 50 amp 125 plug and connector have three blades, one of which has a bend in it and should be clearly marked with the designation 50 amp 125 volt. The 50 amp 125 volt 250 volt plugs and connectors have three blades, two of which have a bend in them, and a fourth connection around the perimeter of the plug. That's actually the ground connection, and it's missing from the single voltage plug and connector. Finally, while it's very common to use 50 foot cord sets, Marinco makes shorter models that may be just right for the distance from the pedestal to your inlet. You can reduce expense and clutter by considering one of these 12 foot, 25 foot or 40 foot cables and keeping a 50 foot cord set on board for cruising. So in this particular case, an owner is elected to put an isolation transformer inside his dock box. So he's got this little inlet outlet and then he's got, this is coming out of the isolation transformer and it goes to a Marinko shore power cord right here. And you'll notice how they've used this sealing ring this gives them a waterproof connection between the male and female fittings so that he doesn't have to worry about any water intrusion on this 30 amp connection.